All right, folks, let's see, folks, where we're dimming the lights, we have some Robotech panel ground rules. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've talked to Comic-Con, and they've, only, they've told us that only people who have clearance from both Comic-Con and Harmony Gold can record this panel. However, you are free to take photographs of the slides, but we ask that no flash photography for everyone's enjoyment. Uh, please, no flash photography. Also, for social media, you can take, the, you can take your photos and upload them to social media. Please use hashtag Robotech and hashtag SDCC on social media. For everyone's enjoyment, take a moment and silence your mobile devices. Folks, you don't want to be that person when the phone goes off, all right? Uh, and also, please hold all questions to the end. As I said before, we are not doing a Zoom call. We're gonna have Q&A afterwards, and I have a mystery box full of prizes I can't wait to give away to you. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that out of the way, my fellow Robotech fans, members of the industry, and invited guests, Welcome to the Robotech The New Beginning panel here at San Diego Comic-Con. Let's hear it. My name is Kevin McKeever. I'm Vice President of Marketing for the Robotech franchise. Sadly, Tommy was unable to make it today. He's not feeling well. He sends his regards. But folks, when last we left the Robotech franchise, Harmony Gold had rocked the anime industry from Texas to Tokyo with our 2019 announcement that we had renewed our license with Tansunoko. The Tansunoko stated that, quote, all of the agreements, including the 2003 amendment to Macross, Southern Cross, and Mospita, will remain in full effect well into the future. See, even they like it too. <laughs> and then in October 2019, the anime industry was shocked again when we announced that Robotech the Series, Robotech the Shadow Chronicles, and Robotech the Sentinels have joined the Funimation catalog. But when the dust settled from all these announcements, fans in the industry had questions, such as, how will Funimation and Harmony Gold work together? Will Robotech ever come out on HD? And yes, what about the Macross sequels and derivatives? Let's tackle the last question first. What about the Macross sequels and derivatives? On April 9th, 2021, it was announced that Big West Company Limited, Studio New Way Incorporated, and Harmony Gold USA announced an expansive agreement for the future of Robotech and Macross worldwide. Now, everyone has been asking us, what are the rules of the road moving forward for both Robotech and Macross? What does this deal actually mean? That is what we're going to talk about today. First off, the Macross sequels from 1987 to 2021 have been cleared for worldwide release. All right. Awesome, isn't it? <laughs> Licensing opportunities for the 1987 to 2021 Macross sequels will be handled by Big West. The agreement also recognizes Harmony Gold's long-standing exclusive license with Tansunoko for SDF Macross and the use of the 41 Macross characters and mecha in the Robotech television series and related merchandise throughout the world, excluding Japan. What does that mean, you ask? Well, it means that licensing opportunities for SDF Macross and the use of the 41 characters outside of Japan will be handled by Crunchyroll and Harmony Gold. The agreement also confirms that Big West will not oppose the Japanese release of the upcoming live-action Robotech movie. Wait, hold it. Live-action Robotech movie? We have some news about that to talk about as well. For in April of, of this year, Sony announced that Iron Man co-writers Art Markham and Matt Holloway have written the script for the live-action film. Art and Matt 
have written the Sony Pictures film Uncharted, which grossed over $396 million worldwide. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a new director for the film. Rice Thomas is now attached to direct the film for Sony Pictures. And what has he directed, you ask? Here is a sample of his work. This is the first Christmas we've had together in years. I love you guys. The director of Hawkeye is now going to direct the Robotech live action film. Currently our producers over at Sony are working on uh, developing a little further. We hope to have some new news for you later on this year. While we're waiting for that, we have a new apparel line. Our friends at Suco have launched a new line of Robotech t-shirts. Here's a look at some of the artwork they're using. And also here they have a line of Robotech hoodies. And our friends over at Udon Studios have their own line of Robotech apparel too. A new line of Robotech t-shirts, which you can buy right now at booth 4529. All of these t-shirts are available. And our friends at Udon have the Robotech art books. We are pleased to announce that the Robotech Southern Cross art book is now shipping for $50. These art books contain character designs, mecha designs, and never before seen concept art from the Southern Cross. This is available right now for $50. And Udon has released the Robotech, the new generation visual archive, which contains uh, all the things, character designs, mecha designs, and concept art. All three books, the Macross, Southern Cross, and new generation books are now shipping from our friends at Udon. And now is a good time to talk about Robotech tabletop games. Our friends at Strange Machine Games have a new Robotech board game called Robotech Reconstruction. This game takes place in the aftermath of the great battle with Dolza's Armada. Here is some of the interior artwork. Here is a look at the gameplay itself. And Robotech Reconstruction will arrive later this year depending on which ship gets unloaded at Long Beach first. <laughs> Strange Machine Games also has a line of role-playing games, starting with the Macross Saga, which is available now for $60. Here's a look at its interior artwork. And folks, a lot of people have asked, yo, Kevin, the Macross Saga is great. What about the other two sagas? Well, Strange Machine, Ga I'm sorry, Strange Machine Games has an interesting announcement. Here is a look at the future. unspeakable power. They threatened our very existence and attacked us with the full force of their might. The earth was nearly destroyed and left as a wasteland. But we survived and rebuilt. We knew the alien threat was coming, so we prepared. We built weapons and mecha of vast power. And when the masters came, we fought back and won. But paid a terrible cost. The Invid found Earth and swarmed with fury. They overwhelmed our forces and plunged the Earth into darkness and chaos. But heroes rose from the ashes to end the threat. Robotech Homefront includes all important figures, mecha, equipment, and ships from both the Masters and New Generation Sagas. The potential to tell more Robotech stories is vast. New mecha, equipment, careers, skills, and ships are available for your world. Hero up. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Robotech Homefront is a supplement to the Robotech the Macross Saga RPG universe and covers both the Robotech Masters and New gener Generation eras of the franchise. Robotech Homefront expands the lore of Robotech further. 
in the eras of the Robotech Masters and New Generation. Here's a look at the artwork, folks. You're absolutely going to love it. This is phenomenal. Just so you know, folks, there's going to be two variant covers, a uh, Masters cover and a New Generation cover. This is the cover artwork right here. And Robotech Homefront will be arriving sometime in 2022, depending on which ship gets unloaded at Long Beach first. But what about folks, can you say, Kevin, this is great. What about video games? Oh, yes. Robotech is now on Nintendo Switch. You want to see it? Yeah. Here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Robotech the Macross Saga HD Edition is now available on Nintendo Switch for $9.99. And yeah, it's pretty cool. You're going to love it. We also have an awesome line of one six scale statues. Many fans have said, Kevin, we're seeing all this Macross stuff. What about the other two sagas? Well, Kids Logic has a Dana Sterling one six scale statue right now. And it's going to order it right now from kidslogic.toys. And Kids Logic also has a new VF1J statue. Here is a video. <laughs> available now from Kids Logic, and Kids Logic also has a line of 112 scale cockpit dioramas, starting with the VF1J, and it's now followed by the VF1S. And the VF1S comes with a very cool removable Roy Foker statue. You can actually remove him from the cockpit itself. And this is available right now from our friends at KidsLogic.toys. And speaking of toys, our friends at MEP Toys have a new line of bad guys, starting with the Invid Scout. Yes, here it is. Also, you're gonna make an Invid Trooper. You all remember the Matchbox one? You're gonna love this one. It's really, really cool. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, we're pleased to announce that um, Mep Toys is going to make a limited edition Invid Hellcat from the Sentinels. This will be out in the fall of 2022. This is limited to a thousand units. So if you're interested, go to meptoys.com. And folks, our friends at Kids Concept also have their line of action figures, starting with the Min May, Rick Hunter, and Min May Variant. They followed up with the Lisa Hayes and Roy Foker. Oh, and notice something? Roy has a guitar. <laughs> Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Kids Concept also announced a Rick Hunter variant figure in his original flight suit. And the flight suit is made of actual cloth. Yes. And for those of you wondering, also, you see, Kevin, you know, these are, like, these are the six-inch action figures. What about the smaller action figures? Our friends at Toynami have their line of small action figures. On sale right now at Booth 3229, Wave 1 is available right now, followed by Wave 2, which is available right now at the Toynami booth. And you can go down to the Toynami booth, and on display, you can see Wave 3. Very, very cool. Go on down to the Toynami booth, tell George Son I sent you, and say hello. You can, you can check out all of these at the Toynami booth, Booth 3229, here at San Diego. And down at the Toynami booth, you can see the new line of transforming cyclones. The Scott Bernard and the Lancer. Check out, you should check them out. These will be available later this year. Also, Toynami has announced a new masterpiece, fully transformable cyclone. If you go down, you can look at the actual uh, art, the uh, concept art. This will be a fully transformable six inch transforming cyclone. I think you're really going to like it. 
And also here at San Diego, we're pleased to announce a new license, Jada Toys. Yes, Jada Toys has launched a new line of Robotech. This is why you turn off your cell phone, folks. <laughs> So my apologies, folks. Um, Jada Toys has launched a new line of what they call Hollywood Rides. These are die-cast cars uh, available right now. You can look at their on display at booth 3746. The Rick Hunter, Roy Foker, Max, and Miria are all part of this line. And you can go right now down to Jada Toys and check them out for yourself. The cars are die-cast metal. And people have been asking us, do they come with the figures? The answer is yes. Yes, you're gonna really love these. Folks, they're phenomenal. And at Anime Expo, they had a one-one scale uh, Roy Foker uh, Toyota Supra on the floor. It was really, really awesome. And speaking of transforming toys, our friends at Toynami have their line of one one hundred scale Macross Retro fully transformable VF1s. You can buy them right now at the Toynami booth. And if you notice, folks, they come in the retro Macross packaging. Check these out, you're really gonna like them. And our friends at Kids Concept have their line of fully transformable VF1s. Starting with the Skull Leader. These are 172 scale, have high die cast metal content, and have LED lighting. The VF1S is now available. And also, ladies and gentlemen, the VF1J Rick Hunter version is available right now. And these will be followed by the Max and Miria fully transformable VF1s. These will be out a little later this year. And let's not forget the bad guys. They're going to make a new line of 172 battle pods. Pretty cool. But folks, a lot of people ask us, Kevin, what about Robotech? in high definition. Yeah. Well, folks, we went into the Harmony Gold building here on Sunset Boulevard, and deep inside the Harmony Gold vaults, we're gonna walk down here, down these stairs, we go into the Harmony Gold vaults. We looked through our vaults and we found how Robotech was originally aired on these Betamax type cassettes. This is how Robotech was originally aired in 1985. And this is how it was aired in overseas under the PAL format for the UK. But folks, one thing we found out was that Robotech, the three shows that make it up, Matt Cross, Southern Cross, and Mospita, are on 16 millimeter film. These are the actual film reels that make up Matt Cross, Southern Cross, and Mospita. This is actually Mospita, episode one. And if you open it, that's the actual, this is the actual film reel. Anime in the 1980s was aired on 16 millimeter film chains, and that's, that's what comes in, that's what comes in with the actual 16 millimeter film reel. And we've digitized these and sent them off to our friends at uh, Crunchyroll and Funimation. And uh, this is what they came up with. In the year 1999, high above Macross Island, Phenomenal event occurred in the skies which altered the course of human history and defined a generation. Robotech, the iconic mega saga finally returns. Now, digitally remastered, own the entire series on Blu-ray and experience it in high definition, featuring all 85 episodes. And stream the entire remastered series on Funimation. The official home of Robotech, coming to a screen near you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Robotech is now available in HD. You can buy it in 1080p, and if you buy the box set, it comes with an exclusive Veritech Fighter dual pack with an exclusive Roy Foker action figure. All 85 episodes of Robotech are now streaming on Funimation in HD and Robotech 2, the Sentinels, and Robotech the Shadow Chronicles will be joining them. But folks, this is a good time to talk about the partnership between Robotech and Sony, namely our partnership with Funimation. Because recently it was announced that Sony had purchased the anime streaming platform Crunchyroll for $1.2 billion in the fall of 2021. 
And then it was announced in March of this year that Sony is phasing out the Funimation brand and eventually all Funimation content will move over to Crunchyroll. Everyone's asking, well, what does this mean for Robotech? Well, the partnership with Sony and Funimation will continue under the Crunchyroll brand. This unique partnership allows both Harmony Gold and Crunchyroll to create, approve, and license new Robotech merchandise. Just to be clear, because some people get a little confused when I'm going to ask during the Q&A, say we got to talk with our friends at Crunchyroll. Both Harmony Gold and Crunchyroll are working together to create, approve, and license new animated Robotech merchandise. The unique partnership allows both companies to manage and develop the franchise worldwide, excluding Japan, for new and existing audiences. And more will be revealed as both Crunchyroll and Funimation merge over the next 18 months. And, and Clay, if you'd be so kind to uh, uh, bring up the lights, because folks, it's now time to hear what you have to say. I have a box filled with Robotech merchandise that I want to give away. So please line up at the microphone. I want to hear what you have to say and ask your questions. We would love to do that. All right, sir, first question. Um, Pressure is on. What, what is your question, my friend? Yeah, my question goes back to the games. Um, is it a Switch exclusive or any plans on putting it on Steam or Epic or maybe a console? So right now, Robotech is right now available only on Nintendo Switch, okay? Our goal is to bring out more Robotech video game content in the future. As you know, Sony has a big sort of uh, interest in video games. So Sony's told us, you know, we want to work with some a, a top flight video game developer. So just stay tuned. Excellent question. I'm going to give you a Robotech sweatshirt and a uh, Robotech wall scroll. Come on up. Here you go. All right. Excellent. Sir, next question. Well, the last time you came and gave this presentation, we asked if there was going to be a toy for the hover tank. Any updates if there's going to be a hover tank toy? We want to see a hover tank toy. We have several licenses and working on one at the moment. We hope to have some more information for you soon. So until then, I'm going to give you, actually, I'm going to give you a Southern Cross sweatshirt and a uh, Rose Wall Scroll. All right. All right. <laughs> Next question. On the Robotech, the Sentinels, are you going to continue potentially creating more cartoon content on that? Excellent question. Let's talk about more Robotech cartoon content. Let's, once again, as you all know, as I said before, Sony purchased the enemy streaming site Crunchyroll for $1.2 billion in the fall of 2021. And now Sony is, is making it so that all uh, Funimation's content is moving to Crunchyroll and they're going to dissolve the Funimation brand. So we're saying, how does this tie with animated Robotech? Well, folks, one thing that has to happen is, is that both Crunchyroll and Funimation have to merge, or as, they, as, as they're calling it internally, the great unification, okay? <laughs> Sony's told us, they said, we know fans want animated Robotech. We know fans want, see, want, want, want to see the Sentinels. They want to see Shadow Rising. They want to see more animated content. But Sony told us, they said, we need you to hold off a little bit while we're doing this merger because Funimation and Crunchyroll are kind of different companies. It's going to take some time for them to merge together and, and function as a cohesive whole. It's not just it's not just Funimation and Crunchyroll. It's Sony overall. Sony has, has been reorganizing their company over the past couple of years so things can flow more smoothly. You've seen some of it, like example, Crunchyroll and Funimation, but also some of Sony's far-flung things, like the anime in Japan. That used to be a very distant thing for Sony. They're, they're bringing them all together under one umbrella. They call it the One Sony Initiative. Sony's told us, they said, we know we fans want this. We just need you to hold off while we do this. It's more, it's more internal corporate things with Sony right now while they're doing that. Once that gets solved, you can see there's, there'll be a lot of good opportunities for animated Robotech. We want to make animated Robotech. We have every intention of making more animated Robotech. I've been talking with some distributors about it, you know, more animated Robotech. We just need some time while this happens, okay? Here, I'm going to give you a, a, a Robotech sweatshirt and a Robotech also. All right, next question. Uh, so for the, the live movie, uh, 
what has been the one or two biggest challenges that have been blocking it since, well, 2007, based on your history, 1.5? So the live, you're talking about the live action film set up over at Sony? Yeah, so, so what's been blocking it since, what are the one or two biggest challenges that have been well, in the way? Well, nothing's been blocked so much as, you have to understand, Sony views Robotech as a Harry Potter type franchise. Okay? Yeah. They understand that for you, the fans, right? We've all have seen, and we shall not mention their names, uh, anime adaptions that haven't quite worked. Do not state their names, <laughs> let's speak of them. But we all know, Sony knows, to make this work, to make it into a Harry Potter franchise, we have to come out and make sure the script is good, we tell a good story with good characters. Because Robotech, believe it or not, is not about giant transforming robots. It's about people. That's what makes Robotech so great. And so Sony understands this. You might remember, some of you saw my the History of Robotech presentation. Just to give you an idea how important Sony views it as, is that when I was giving that presentation to the people at Sony, the president stopped me and said, Kevin, tell us the difference between Robotech and Transformers. Before I could answer, two Sony executives answered the question and they nailed it. And they, they go, Kevin, is that right? I go, yep, absolutely. And they, they explain why Robotech is different from Transformers and what makes Robotech so special. It's the characters, it's the people. We have to tell, they understand, we have to tell a good script. We, we have to tell a good story. We have to make a good movie. That takes time. To help put this into perspective and help answer your question, to make any type of live action film, whether it's Robotech, whether it's Transformers, whether it's Harry Potter, you need 10,000 people all to say yes. If one person along that chain says no, the whole deal could fall apart. So who needs to get bribed? Who needs to get bribed? Oh, trust me, Sony's doing that for us. Trust me, I promise you. Sony's doing that. Look, look at what they've done. You know, they brought over two outstanding writers. The writers of Iron Man are now a part of the Robotech movie. And also we have a great new director, Rice Thomas. I, I think you're really gonna like his work. So, once again, sir, excellent question. We'll give you a Robotech shirt and a uh, Robotech wall scroll. Come on. <laughs> Next question, sir. Uh, my question is about the toys. I'm yes. a mini tabletop gamer and yep. a minis painter. We, you, there was a line for a little while for a minis game for yes. Robotech, but it just stopped. There wasn't anything beyond battle pods or or the fighters, the the VF ones. Can we? Is there any hopes of getting more like the Invid, like the? I have awesome news. Our friends at Kids Logic have made a new min, a new line of miniatures. Yes, Kids, kidslogic.toys, go to kidslogic.toys, they have a new line of miniatures, including the capital ships and the battle pods. Yes, oh, you're gonna love them. Yeah, I didn't hear about that. Oh, well, see, now you have. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> Once again, kidslogic.toys. Repeating, kidslogic.toys. Everyone repeat after me, kidslogic.toys. Do, trust me, go to that website, you'll see the game. I promise you, you're gonna be very, very happy. They have capital ships. I'm stoked. Okay, thank you. Well, well Mark and Gianni have had a long, successful track record in Hollywood. For example, Mark Canton produced such films as his Mortals, The Spiderwick Chronicles, Cake, starring Jennifer Aniston, 300 Rise of the Empire, and 300. Mark was also the person who hired, when he was president of Warner Brothers, hired a gentleman named Tim Burton to direct oh. Michael Keaton in Batman. Mark was also chairman of Sony Pictures, where he uh, greenlit such films as A Few Good Men and, uh, and uh, Starship Troopers. Johnny Munery produced such films as Seven, From Dusk Till Dawn, <coughs> The Departed, Shutter Island, 300, and 300 Rise of an Empire. Now folks, in, 27, in sorry, 2015 we announced that Sony Pictures now has the live action film rights. And you know, one of the nice things about this, people said, you know, look, this is great, but here is uh, Frank Agrama signing the actual contract for the 
live action film at the Harmony Gold offices. Just so you know, this is the chairman, Frank Agrama. The woman in green, that's Jehanna Agrama, the associate producer of Robotech, Frank's daughter. And behind them is Frank's granddaughter. So this is kind of really interesting. This is them actually signed. This is the actual con contract. And after the contract was signed, everyone at Harmony Gold celebrated. But then after the celebration ended, we all began to get deluged with questions from Sony. Because all these executives had questions about Robotech. You know, what about the show? What's going on? We were getting just question after question from executives all over the company. So what happened was Sony said, look, we want you all to come over to our lot in Culver City and give us a presentation. So we go to the lot. I go, I'm part, I'm, I'm, I'm give the presentation. They usher us into the executive boardroom at Sony Pictures. This is the actual executive boardroom. And what we did was we gave each executive a uh, brochure about the franchise and a limited edition Robotech toy by Toynami. And once we began the presentation, we talked about Robotech and you know all the stuff, you know, its history, its demographics, its ratings, you know, stuff that I showed you guys earlier in the, in the ratings and demographics. And they stopped us and said, look, the president of Sony said, look, this is great, but we want more Robotech in the marketplace. So Sony Pictures granted Harmony Gold clearance to continue to create and license new animated Robotech merchandise. And this, this presentation is a little bit old, we're gonna talk about more in the actual Robotech presentation. But Sony and Harmony Gold began to explore ways to expand our partnership for Robotech. So what happened was, you might remember, Sony acquired this company called Funimation in 2017. Well now, Fun Robotech has joined the Funimation catalog, such as Robotech series, the Shadow Chronicles, and the Sentinels are now part of the Funimation catalog. And as part of the Robotech merchandising, we launched a new four-way in tabletop games. For example, we launched a new tabletop game called Robotech Crisis Point, and also two other board games, Robotech Ace Pilot, and Robotech Attack on the S uh, SDF-1 from our friends at Strange Machine Games. There's also two other games that came out, Robotech Brace for Impact and Robotech Cyclone Run. These are all available right now, by the way. But folks, a lot of you are here for Transforming Toys. We have a new license called Kids Concept, based out of Hong Kong. They launched a new line of super deformed, fully transformable VF1s. These stand almost six inches tall, have a high level articulation, have high die cast metal content, and LED lighting. Then Kids Concept launched a new line of fully transformable 172 uh, design accurate VF1s. But they didn't stop there. They also had the singing, dancing <laughs> Min Man. And, and, and play, there's, 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 there's going to be video just one on the next slide. What does the singing dancing we may do? Well, here it is. To me in love must be the sweetest feeling that a girl can feel. To be in love, to live a dream. It's a Bluetooth capable speaker system. You can now have Min May sing any song that you want. But Kids Concept didn't stop there. They also had the pullback Min May. Pullback Min May, you say? Well, Kev, what's the pullback Min May? Well, you pull it back, and this is what happens. <laughs> they come in four colors, and these are available now from Kids Concept. But also, folks, we have a new line of collectibles as well. The one six scale uh, VF1J cockpit. This is a Bluetooth capable speaker system. It has LED lighting and a video screen inside. And folks, even before it came out, it sold out. So Kids Logic said, you know what? This is my friends at Kids Logic in Hong Kong. They said, let's make a new one. And uh, here's a video about it.
and this sold out before it even came out onto the market. That's how good they are. But kids' concept, uh, kids, kids, kids' logic didn't stop there either. They actually, we talked about SDF one. They launched a three foot tall SDF one. It's LED lighting and it's a Bluetooth capable speaker system. You can actually buy this right now from kids from Kids Logic for about uh, for about three thousand dollars. It stands three feet tall. Oh yeah. Oh, folks, this is the, the these photos don't do it justice. But we also have, you know, folks that Kevin saw Macross, Macross, Macross. Well, Kids Logic also made a uh, Cyclone statue. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, Kevin, this is all great, but you know, back in 2017, you know, I heard like this this thing about an arbitration ruling from a California court. What's going on here? Well, it's a little tough for you to read in, in the back, so let me read it to you. You know, a California court in June of 2017, uh, opined that a license agreement between Harmony Gold USA Incorporated and Tansonoko Production, affirming Harmony Gold's license for the Super Dimension Fortress Macross, the Super Dimension Calvary Southern Cross, and Genesis Climber Rospita, will expire on March 14, 2021. And everybody went, oh, it's the end of Robotech. It's all over. Soon Robotech will be gone. Then, Anime Expo 2019, we announced that Harmony Gold and Tatsuneko signed an agreement to renew and extend the current license and amendments for Mac Cross, Southern Cross, and Mosfita. And since this is a renewal and extension of the current agreements, all of Harmony Gold's rights to Mac Cross, Southern Cross, and Mosfita will remain full and in full effect well into the future. Our chairman, Frank Grama, had this to say, quote, over the past 35 years, we have been blessed to work with our friends at Tatsunoko on developing one of the world's greatest entertainment franchises. With our extension, we look forward to the next 35 years of, world, of working with Tatsunoko and our world-class business partners on Robotech. So fans had new questions. How will Harmony Gold and Funimation work together? Will Robotech ever come out on HD? And what about the Macross sequels and derivatives? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to find out at the Robotech, the new beginning panel, in about 15 minutes, okay? So I just want to give you a heads up. There you all. Any uh, questions while we're waiting? Uh, any questions? Yeah, see, I know. Trust me, it's, it's worth the wait. You're going to love the presentation. So any questions while we're waiting? Yeah? Okay, I have a Matt Cross comment. I didn't even ask it. Uh, not going on Matt Cross. Uh, the last Robotech movie was... Uh, Shadows. Shadow Chronicles, yes. Yeah. Was there ever going to be a sequel to that? Or you know what? Do me a favor. Ask that question in the Q&A after the okay. panel. I'll have an answer for you. Right. Okay? So. But that was the last thing they did, Oops. right? Animation-wise? No. The last thing we did was uh, Robotech Love Live Alive. Oh, yeah. So. Um, that's from Mosquita. Yeah, that's, that, 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 is, that is from Mosquita. So, um, yeah, you're right, you're right. Uh, there we go. Okay, there's our slide while we're waiting. So, uh, any other questions while we're uh, getting ready to go? Yes, over there. How does the Funimation Crunchyroll merger affect the best? If you wait about 25 minutes, <laughs> we're going to talk about that. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, you know, so, so, this is good. Any other pre show questions? Yes. <sighs> Tommy Yoon is unable to make it because he is not feeling well. So, I, I'm going to have to host the Robotech panel pretty much all by myself. So. Oh. So there we go. But Tommy sends his regards. He does apologize. But we have a rule in this sort of post-COVID era, not just even just post-COVID. I always tell people, if you don't feel well, don't come to the panel. It's, it's, it's OK. I mean, I, I'm the only one who has to be here. I'm contractually obligated to be here. So you know, I totally understand. I wish Tommy had, Tommy's going to recover very fine, but I told him this. Yes? Yeah. What's the juiciest thing you're willing to tell us before the panel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Minute Maid fruit juice is really good. <laughs> yeah, that's just the juiciest thing. And, you know, there you go. So, so, uh, so. All right. Any other pre-show questions, folks? We have about we have about ten minutes before we start. Anyone? Bueller? Okay. Yes, we haven't heard from you, sir. Yes. We're going to talk about apparel in about 15 minutes, but 
you're gonna see, I'll pass along your idea. For, we, we've, been, we've been talking about cosplay type clothing. I can't go any further, I gotta be very, very vague. We're gonna talk about this like when we talk about the relationship between Funimation and Harmony Gold and all that other stuff, but that, that has been discussed. So that's, that's, that's the best I can, that's the best answer I can give you. So, okay, we, have, we, we still have time, at least 15 minutes before the pre-show, before the panel begins, so, yes, sir. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> okay. This is actually an excellent question. Let me repeat the question so everyone can hear this because it's actually a really. I'm glad you asked this question. The question was, Kevin, if you could stop being a Harmony Gold minion. <laughs> <laughs> for like a couple minutes, what would you, who would you cast in the live action film? I cannot answer that question for this simple reason. Here is why. If I were to say, I would like to see blank actor play blank role in the live action Robotech movie, it would be tweeted out. Today at San Diego Comic Con, Kevin McKeever announced that Blank Actor will be playing Blank Role in live action Robotech movie. And that sets up a whole host of problems, and let me explain why. Sony all of a sudden calls up and says, Hey, what's going on here, Kev? Uh, you just made this announcement, and like, no, no, I didn't. The actor's agent to go, Oh, well, I'm gonna need a payday, or maybe not, you know. That, actor's, that actor could be negotiating for something else, and all of a sudden this gets announced, that actor could lose, theoretically lose, lose work. So we've all, Sony's always told us, and this is, this, this is something I, I fully agree by, because actually I told them this is how we do it. We don't speculate for that specific reason. And because people will not take it as speculation, they will take it as a word of fact. And that's why we do not talk about, we do not speculate from, from these panels. We, don't, we never answer that question. And we'll, we'll talk, we're going to, we have a lot to talk about the live action film in the panel, give us about uh, 10 minutes, and we'll be talking about that, but um, we can't speculate for that specific reason, because once again, if I were to say, I'd love to see this actor, see, it'd be, oh, well, Kevin announced, breaking news, and then it's like, and then I get like 15 Sony executives calling Harmony Gold, and they're going to throw me a room and lock away the room, and that's never, you know, yeah. so, yeah, so that's, that's why I cannot answer it, so, yes. I can't comment on that. <laughs> but Minute Maid fruit juice is very good. <laughs> so, 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 so there you go. But you want a good juicy story? While we're waiting? Yeah. yeah that, that, that's, 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 um, Robotech related. Hold on here. Let me see if we can find it. I think I, I think I have it. And, um, let's see if we can find it. Cause I, I think we can show, oh yeah, here it is. So, it's, 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 it's juicy, trust me. You'll, 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 you'll see how juicy it is in just one second here. Because uh, one of the shows, we talked about touring before, right? Well, one of the shows,